The proof that no one actually knew what Jesus looked like is this controversial relic, the Shroud of Turin. It's said to be the cloth in which Jesus was wrapped at his death. And this haunting likeness is the true face of Christ, preserved miraculously in his blood. Or so they say. The Shroud of Turin doesn't get shown very often, but when it does, thousands of pilgrims flock to Turin to see it, and most of them believe they're looking at the true face of Christ. When I went to see it, there was such a powerful atmosphere in the church. So many people, so certain they were staring at the remains of Jesus. But I'm afraid they weren't, because Jesus Christ didn't look like that. At least, not according to the evidence left behind by the first Christian artists who described him. According to these first Christian artists, Jesus actually looked like this. Blonde, fresh-faced, boyish. The earliest images of Jesus look nothing like the Jesus we know today. And nothing like the Jesus on the Turin Shroud. Jesus, at first, is a happy-go-lucky character. Curly-haired and handsome. He's usually shown waving his wand about, performing remarkable miracles. So here, he's turning water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana. And here, he's curing the paralytic who couldn't walk until he met the baby-faced Jesus. And over here, the blind man is being cured by Jesus again. And finally, with a wave of that Harry Potter wand of his, this is Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And you can always tell Lazarus in early Christian art because he looks like an Egyptian mummy, all wrapped up. What you never see in these very first examples of Christian art is a Jesus who's suffering, in pain, covered in blood, like the one on the Turin Shroud. That Jesus doesn't turn up in art for a thousand years or so, because the tortured Jesus is a creation of the Middle Ages, an expression of medieval guilt and terror. What horrible pains the artistic mind went on to inflict on the crucified Jesus in the centuries ahead. How harshly it whipped him and scourged him and punctured him. In the beginning, though, artists didn't do that. The first Jesuses in art are young and handsome, curly-haired and free. So, either Jesus deliberately misled his followers about what he actually looked like for the first 1,000 years or so of Christianity, or the Turin Shroud is a medieval fake. I know what I think. The first Christians weren't looking for a God who made them feel guilty. That would never have caught on. They were looking for a God who would save them and fill them with hope. So as their model for the first Jesus, Christian artists selected the youngest and handsomest of the pagan gods. They chose Apollo, the God of the Sun. Blonde and unbearded, youthful and curly-haired. Apollo was a god who made you feel good. So the first Jesuses were curly-haired and pretty because they borrowed that look from Apollo. And it went further than that. When this mysterious Christian statue was dug up out of the ground, it was thought to represent a woman, 
an unknown goddess, a muse. Only later was it realized that this too was an early Jesus. In that wonderful museum in Cleveland, the one with the Jonah marbles, there's a carving of Apollo performing a miracle with Nike, the goddess of victory. Apollo is the robed figure on the left. And look how shapely he is. How easily we might mistake him too for a woman. Pagan gods could be male and female. They could amalgamate the sexes and represent both genders at once, just like this Jesus here. Extraordinary as it sounds, the first Jesuses were sometimes made to look feminine on purpose. They were given suggestions of breasts, beautiful faces, soft bodies and long hair. There is neither male nor female, wrote St. Paul to the Galicians. You are all one in Jesus. The pagans had lots of goddesses to worship, Venus, Isis, Diana, but Christianity had none. Christianity believed in one true God and he was masculine. There was an entire feminine side missing. So the feminization of Jesus was a deliberate artistic attempt to cater for both sexes. It produced some of the Dark Ages' most unexpected imagery. In Ravenna, in the magnificent Aryan baptistry, there's an unbearded Jesus being baptized in the River Jordan. And he's so soft and feminine a podgy and delicate Christ with childbearing hips. Before this girlish Jesus could become fully masculine, grow a beard and turn into a man, Christianity needed to find a feminine presence of its own.